episode 95 of the Cricket Her Weekly. Getting quite close to that big hundred, Raph. Oh. Are we going to have a party? It's coming up. Of course we're going to have a party. Okay. We're going to have hats and everything. Great. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be great for the people who listen on the audio version. Anyway, um, so a couple of episodes ago we did, uh, we talked about our highlights of 2021 um, and we asked we for your highlights of 2021 and we did get some responses coming in so I just thought I'd start by reading out a couple of those. Um, Mark Williams says that his favourite moment of the year was the 100, definitely. Capsy comes of age, Izzy Wong, Emily Arlott, Lauren Bell, Tash Farrant resurging her career, the incredible South Africans performing in global franchise cricket. Lastly, watching Australia A players Katie Mack, Amanda Jade Wellington, Laura Kamintz, Erin Burns and Piper Cleary performing in the 100. Some great memories and one point in Capsy Bingo there if you're playing along at home. (laughs) Okay, and Netherfield says that their favourite moment of the year was the quite astonishing delivery by Sheikha Pandey to dis- dismiss Alyssa Healy, ball of the century. Yeah, quite something, wasn't it? It was. Um, I'm sorry to, to disappoint you, though, Netherfield, but I've got some bad news for you. And that takes us nicely on to the first topic of the week, which is that India have announced their forthcoming World Cup squad, um, and there's been some notable admissions as well as um, a couple of new faces. Um, so Sheikha Pandey is not going to be playing in the World Cup. Sorry, Netherfield. Um, Jemima Rodriguez is not going to be playing in the World Cup. And nor is Poonam Rout. Um, now, Yashtika Bhatia and Meghna Singh um, have both been included. Um, so that's great news for them. Um, Yashtika Bhatia um, hit that memorable half century against Australia in the ODIs in September. Um, and Meghna Singh also um, did well on that tour. I think that she was one of the, the players who was opening the bowling with Julian Goswami. Um, so it's, it's great for them. Um, but some of those omissions are quite striking, aren't they, Sid? Yeah, it's been okay. So first of all, it's important to acknowledge. I think it's been it's been an odd year for India, hasn't it? That um, we were looking back on the st- the stats for India, and they, they've won very few games this year. Their, their win loss ratio is quite horrific. Um, to to the to the extent that if England had that kind of win loss or loss ratio more accurately, then you know we'd be you know questioning the positions of the captain and the coach. I think. Um, I think it's also important the other side of the coin that they've played an, a, a very informed South Africa and England and Australia. Mm-hmm. So they've played three of the other top teams in the world um, and they, you know they fought hard in those series I don't yep. think it's actually quite as bad as the the, the numbers the numbers suggest yep. um, but you know people are paying the price for those those lack of performances and I think they're still trying to find what they feel is the best combination um, I'm sure the selectors have picked sides that they believe will you know go forward and win the World Cup for them um, you know as you sort of mentioned they've gone for some younger players uh, Poonam Rout and Shikha Pandey are both 32 okay. um, so they're at the older end of the age spectrum you have to wonder actually if we're likely to see either of them again right um you know but obviously you know well we've seen that Sheikha Pandey took to social media um she put up a blog post saying you know she was going to carry on working so obviously she's hopeful that she'll be able to do so Poonam Rout also took to social media didn't she with a, uh, a, she did, with perhaps <laughs> a little slightly. bit less tact yeah. um <laughs> and um perhaps was a bit more kind of you know why the hell is this um, one player who didn't take to social media, Jemima Rodriguez, and I think that's probably the, 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 the real one. I mean, mm. certainly if you're looking at social media, that's the what real one people are questioning. Um, you know, she's been in great form. She had great performances in the 100, great performances in WBBL. So, you know, she's playing well overseas. She's, she's, she's performing in franchise cricket. Um, but the Indian selectors have decided that she's the one that's going to pay the price for their, you know, lack of results this year. And it's true that she, has, she hasn't had a double-figure score in ODI since 2019. Um, that hasn't been a huge number of games in there she's also been in and out of the team you know and we know that it doesn't do any player any good to you know keep getting dropped and to keep feeling your place is under threat you know if there's one thing guaranteed to kind of put them put the mockers on you it's going to be going well if you don't perform in this game then you're going to be dropped again um so it's difficult but i mean jemima rodericks for me she's she's clearly got the class yeah. um you know that that's the old thing in cricket that um you know class is permanent you know form is form is just a temporary thing and yeah. if you want to get her back into form she needs to be playing um, and given how well she's played in the franchise tournaments that's that's the real surprise for me what yeah, about you Raph? I'm, I agree I think that that's the most striking thing is the contrast b- between her performances um, in the 100 and prior to that in the Kia Super League over here in England um, and her performances um, for India um, and I actually think that that smacks of 
huge player mismanagement by the BCCI and, and the people who they've put in charge of the India team. If somebody is able to bat like Rodrigues can, and we've seen her do it... Um, in, yeah, it's in consistently. She's not cricket. just fluked one yeah, tournament. No. She did it in the KSL, she did it in the 100, she did it in the CSWBL. she's got the technique. If somebody is able to bat like that in franchise cricket um, and they don't then translate that into performances for their country, then you have to wonder whether there's something else going on in the setup. Um, and... You know, it's, it sounds a bit like a conspiracy theory, but if it was an England player who was consistently doing that in WBBL, um, then they'd be one of the, the first names on the team sheet, Absolutely. wouldn't they? England would kill for Lauren Winfield to have turned in those kind of numbers in you know WBBL exactly. and um, um, in the and the hundred. So I just think that it's it's all very strange, and um, I think it's a real shame because what she really needs is a good run in the ODI team, and for them to actually back her. Um, because she's clearly got the technique. So I think that that's really disappointing. The other thing about all this that is going to lend itself to conspiracy theories and people debating and having conversations and um, you know really questioning um, this team or this squad that's been picked is the fact that there was no BCCI press conference to announce it. They just kind of slipped it out there um, and um, they didn't give anyone any opportunity to ask questions to the extent that people were left going, well... Is you know is she Kapandi or Jemima Rodriguez? Are they injured? Um, is that is that what's going on here? And um, we don't think that's the case. But um, you know people are having to ask that because there's no BCCI representative um, actually putting themselves out there for people to ask questions to. Yes, yeah, Neha Pradhan was mentioning this on Twitter, wasn't she? And she also pointed out that they did have a press conference prior to the squads being announced for the last men's. Uh, ICC tournament so you know that they're, they're doing it for the men's team but it's just what you do isn't it I mean it's very odd because um, it feels like the BCCI think that we're still 10 years ago when um, perhaps you could announce a, a squad for a women's cricket world cup and um, people wouldn't necessarily be engaged enough to be particularly interested but it's been it's been years since um, you know people are really really keen on being told and, and are really engaged with um Indian women's cricket now and I think that it's a bit naive to assume that people aren't going to be asking these questions um it's all it's all very bizarre um you know we always get um we always get Heather Knight or Lisa Kitely or somebody um to ask questions to when an England squad is announced yeah we we, we had the opportunity to talk to Heather Knight yeah. um a couple of weeks ago when the England squad for the Ashes was announced obviously that's not quite the same as the World Cup squad I assume when they do actually announce the World Cup squad however there will be a press conference to go to go with that and we will have the chance to ask questions they don't always give you straight answers of course no um, but you at know, least you can say Heather Knight knows how to play a straight bat it's the equivalent of you know England leave Catherine Brunt out of their squad um, and just don't say anything and there's no opportunity to ask questions um, we would, that would be the first thing that the journalist would be asking Heather in that instance so it's um, I think that the lack of transparency from the BCCI is really disappointing actually okay now, there's been some other big news this week um, relating to the Ashes. We've been banging on about it for a while, it's fair to say, on the Cricket Her Weekly about the tightness of the schedules between the Women's Ashes, the end of the Women's Ashes and, and the beginning of the World Cup. And it seems that Cricket Australia and the ECB have finally woken up um, and, and smelt the coffee, as it were. Sid, they've changed the schedule, haven't they? Yeah, they have. They've, they've, um, they've, they've kind of completely rejigged it. I mean... Just, just first of all, it, it feels a bit like, actually, in retrospect now, that the, that the boards were genuinely looking at the entire situation and going, well, maybe New Zealand will just make the kids so we don't have to quarantine. Very um, naive and, uh, if they were, but yeah. The New Zealand government have obviously you know, kept saying, well, no, guys, you're going to need to quarantine, you're going to need to quarantine, and they've eventually accepted this. Um, now, as we mentioned in previous vodcasts, that only go a very tight window for them to do so. What they've done now is they've rejigged the schedule, they've moved the T20s, before the test, mm -hmm. so the T20s are now going to take place when the warm-ups were supposed to take place. Mm -hmm. um, the test is pretty much staying where it is, exactly staying where it is, and then the ODI is going to take place after the test at the, at the point where the T20s were supposed to be played. Okay. Um, that means that they can fly more quickly to New Zealand. They can get the 10-day quarantine done. Bearing in mind this is a very tight quarantine, as we mentioned last week. Um, you know, this is a serious. You know, you need to be isolated for most of this quarantine. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they'll be in a position to play some warm-up games in New Zealand just ahead of the World Cup and their first game against each other in the World Cup. So a substantial change to the schedule, yeah. uh, Raf, does, does, it, does it mean anything? Is it going to have any implications? What do you feel about that? Um, well, my immediate reaction was that it's, it, it does advantage Australia. 
I know it's been pointed out in the media, for example, that because of the cancellation of some um, rounds of the WNCL, um, it means that players like uh, Meg Lanning and Beth Mooney won't have played any cricket since the end of the WBBL um, in November, I think that was, for example. So that's, um, that's a substantial period um, for them of, of going without any cricket. Um, but on the other hand, um, England are coming, um, obviously, on the back of their off-season. All of the preparation that they've done um, has been Red Bull, hasn't it? Because they've been prepping for the test. Um, so to then suddenly switch back to White Ball and then have to then switch back to Red Bull again quite quickly, I think is going to be difficult for the, for the England players. Um, so there's that, first of all. The other thing is that um, we were saying last week that having the test first meant that actually Heather Knight had the opportunity to kind of, um, you know, stamp all over, stamp, stamp England's authority over the series. They almost in, take a gamble with the test. Yeah, because um, taking advantage of the fact that I think we can all agree that the test is Australia's weakest format. It's their least predictable format. It's the one in which they have least experience. Um, obviously, that's true of England as well, but... Australia are so strong in, in T20s and, and ODIs that actually you feel that having the T20 leg of the series first and ha them having the, the opportunity then to, to win the first two or even three matches is going to then really shape the rest of the series. So I do feel that it gives a bit of an advantage to Australia. Now, the other thing that's maybe a bit disappointing for some of the A squad players, Sid? Yeah, I think that what, what a key thing for me here is that what, what what's going to result is that it means the chances of anyone from the A squad making it to the World Cup now, barring injuries or, of course, mm. COVID stepping in again uh, more dramatically, uh, I don't think any of the A squad will make the, the World Cup now. Um, so I thought there was a chance. Um, originally, there were supposed to be some AT20 games which were going to be played during the test, okay. which meant that if anyone performed outstandingly in those AT20 games, they had the potential to be selected for the Ashes T20 games. Um, you know, so Alice Capsey comes in and, you know, hits 200 runs in three T20 games. She has the potential to then be selected for that, um, for the T20 leg of the Ashes and then potentially to the World Cup as well. Mm -hmm. And other people do as well, to be fair. It's not just Alice Capsey, you know, Eve Jones or George Rowe is making our way back. Anyone or, playing the Capsey... Yeah. Capsi Bingo game is going yeah, to be you, having a you, great day today. Yeah. <laughs> Do they get more points every time we say Capsi Bingo yes. as well? Wow, okay. <laughs> we mustn't say Capsi Bingo. Don't say Capsi Bingo okay, ever I'll, again. Okay, I won't ever say Capsi Bingo Nor will again. I. I won't say Capsi Bingo again. <laughs> Um, anyway, so I think there's very little chance now of, of any of those players um, making it through to the the, the squad for the World Cup, okay. which is um, you know, perhaps going to be a little bit disappointing. On the other hand, the chances weren't great anyway, I don't think. I think England were pretty confident um, about what their 11 were, were going to be and pretty confident about what their squad were going to be. Um, See, I actually disagree with that because okay. I think that the way that COVID is currently kind of rampaging through Australia, it will be an absolute miracle if we get to the start of the World Cup and both England and Australia have full strength squads. Well, of course, this is the World Cup, isn't it? We're yeah. working up virtually every day this week to news from Australia. Obviously, Australia playing the men's Big Bash at the moment, working up virtually every day this week to news that one or other Big Bash player has got COVID well, or there's a whole, has there's met someone with COVID or is having to isolate. Was, I can't remember which team it was, but 13 of them had actually all tested positive. It was literally in every single... So they, they had to cancel a match because they would have had to get in like literally fly in 12 more players and they couldn't they didn't have the resources to do yeah. that so i mean it is just it's just everywhere and you, yeah I'm something like a hundred thousand cases in australia in the past week um which is you know just a whacking proportion of australia obviously so bear in mind not obviously some australian people know, watching this will know this australia not a huge place basically a population similar to the size of london so you know a hundred thousand cases in the last week that's a lot of cases it is and um, i think that um we're hearing that the, um, that Cricket Australia are, are putting in place much stricter regulations um, for how the conditions under which the women's ashes will be played. So it's going to be much stricter than has been in the case for the men's ashes. So, for example, the Australia um, players are already being told you can't leave the house unless it's for essential purposes. Um, and that's, you know, so that's kind of for, you know, seven or ten days before they actually even enter the, the camp. 
yeah. ahead of the Ashes series. Because, of course, they've been told, this is the other thing that's come out this week, that, we, that the players have been told that if they aren't on the plane to the World Cup, on the day the teams fly, they won't be able to go. Yeah. They won't be able to catch up and come in a week later. The New Zealand government have said, no, everyone needs to come at the beginning. We're not going to let anyone else in otherwise. Um, so, you know, they need to be really, really yeah. careful. And they've got partners with them as well. It's going to be tough on the partners. You know, if Brianna Basher's boyfriend goes out to a, get a cup of coffee in... Uh, you know, Starbucks or whatever, and then comes back with Costa and gives her comes back Costa. Well, that would be that would be bad as well. <laughs> <laughs> comes back with Corona. That would be bad for Starbucks. Yes. Starbucks. Why are you giving out your your main rival's coffee? <laughs> comes comes back with with Corona and gives it to Brianna. Then Brianna is going to miss the World Cup. Can I just um, say that that scenario is just totally would never happen, Sid, because Australians don't believe in chain coffee stores. <laughs> Of course. I would like to apologise at this time to <laughs> anyone from Australia for suggesting that anyone have, buys coffee in Starbucks. They have good coffee over there. Anyway, um, yes, no, exactly. And I think that that's going to be quite difficult because, um, you know, they've the ECB have tried um, to... It's almost been a kind of thing to say, well, we want to have equal conditions in place for the women as we have for mm-hmm, the men. Yeah. So they offered the men the chance to take their partners out with them. And we know that, for example, um, Heather Knight's partner um, has... Um, taken a sabbatical or even quit his job for three months and is going out there um, to, to stay with her for the duration of the Ashes and then the World Cup, I think, the World Cup as well. Um, and so that's actually, that's going to be quite difficult in some ways because he's going to be, and, and any of the other partners, are going to be living under really strict conditions potentially. Yeah, and even if they aren't living under you know strict conditions from a sort of legal perspective, they'll they'll know that if they go out and bring coronavirus back into the camp, then yeah. you know that that's potentially very bad. Yeah. So you know it's going to be a, a tough few weeks, but um, you know. So I think that my point was actually that it potentially does then pave the way for somebody yeah. like Alice Capsey if she can be COVID free at the point at which they get on that plane to New Zealand. Um, you know, it could be um, somebody else's misfortune is her gain or somebody else's gain. Eve yeah. Jones's gain or someone else. Who knows? Anyway, um, yeah, obviously we don't wish COVID on anyone, um, but Omicron does seem to be fairly mild, so it could be a kind of... Um, well, it's a thing of so many asymptomatic cases, yeah. but, 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 but nevertheless, you know, it could still ruin your World Cup, exactly. even if it barely affects you. Yeah. Okay, um, now finally this week, Sid, um, the ICC have announced a new scheme, or I don't quite know how to describe it, but they're calling it cryptos um what's it all about well they're nfts raf and if you're wondering what all this is actually about in terms of like well it's it's crypto and it's nfts well let's 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 take a a sort of analogy let's let's imagine that i'm setting up a business selling cricket stickers so i'm setting up a business selling cricket stickers do you want to buy some cricket stickers yeah i'd love to buy some cricket stickers okay that'll be five pounds please raf um okay great oh i'm really excited because i'm really hoping i get meg lanning ah well, if you want to get Meg Lanning, that'll be £10. Oh, so that's that's more. Okay. Well, the best players are more expensive, Raph, obviously. I mean, that's fair enough. Okay, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you £10, but then I'll definitely get Meg Lanning. No, you, you might, you've got a better chance of getting a good player, but you won't, you won't definitely get one. You could still, it could still be, you know, Brianna Basher and... It could be Brianna Basher five times, Raph. Oh, okay. Um, okay, well... Okay, here's, but here's, you never here's, know. here's ten pounds then. Okay, brilliant. Thanks for your thanks for your ten pounds, Raf. Okay, so can I have my stickers now? Oh no no no, you're misunderstanding, Raf. You don't get to have the stickers, uh, but I can show them to you. I'll, I'll show them to you. Here you are. I'll show you. I'm show, showing you your thanks. stickers. So I've paid you ten pounds, and you're just showing me the stickers. Yeah, that's how it works. Okay. That's how Sid's football stickers work, guys. Okay, I'm just I'm just looking at the stickers now, and um doesn't look like I have got Meg Lanning. Mm, doesn't look like it, Raph. Oh, but I, I have got Alyssa Healy, ah, so well, I tell you what... She's a top I, player. I could swap her with, with Meg Lanning. <laughs> well, not... not what, what you could do, Raph, is you could, you could, you could sell Alyssa Healy. I'll, I'll take just a few percent of my, my personal cut when you sell her, and then, you could, you know, then you've got some money, and you could use that to buy Meg Lanning from someone else. I'll take a small cut of that as well, obviously. So Obviously. even though I've paid the ten pounds, um, if I then sell or try to swap with somebody else, you then take a you then take a percentage of that cut, money. A small cut, yes, Raph, a small cut. Um, okay. For my expenses, obviously. Okay, and that. Okay, and, ev- and that would be every single 
sale yeah. that I make, yeah. you would you would take a cut of. Yeah. Um, right. I've got a lot okay. of expenses. So, but I mean, I've paid you the ten pounds. So presumably, any time I wanted to look at those stickers, including Alyssa Healy, I can do. Yeah, if if I'm around, if I'm you know, if I'm if I'm still about, then I'll show them to you. Yes, any time you want to look at them, just come and you know, knock on my door, rat rat a tat tat, and I'll show them to you. Okay, I mean, but what? So so even in like a year's time, I can still come back and look at the stickers. Well, you know, I mean, I, I might have got might have moved house, or I might have gone away, or I just might decide that I don't want to show them to you at that point. So. You know, under those circumstances. But, you know, right now you can look at them. Look at them, look at them now. Great. Can't guarantee you'll be able to look at them in a year's time, though, Raph. I might have gone away or gone out of business or just got bored. Okay. So, I paid you the £10. It yeah. Was, it feels like it might have been a bit of a waste of money, actually. Um, no, no I, can, I can assure you, Raph, that your money has not been wasted. Okay. Why hasn't it been wasted? I spent it on a jet ski. That's nice. Can I have a go? No. Okay. <laughs> and that pretty much sums up what the ICC is doing, I guess. Well, that certainly sums up Sid's cricket stickers, Raph. Good, good. Um, well, Which are entirely fictional and bear no relation to, <laughs> to <crypto>. any other <laughs> NFTs. <laughs> Real or imagined or dead or living or anything. Well, all I can say is, Sid, it's so nice to see the ICC... Um, doing great things with their time and resources. Awesome. That's all for this week. Bye for now. Bye.